We are really lucky to be part of an industry that is having a massive tech boom as of late. There are more and more options coming on the market across every product range and price point. And one area in particular that has seen a lot of growth recently is wireless video transmission. With how COVID restrictions have changed the way we work, on-set wireless monitoring, streaming, and remote operation have become more popular than ever. And there are now so many options on the market. So we thought we would put together this video breaking down why you may want a wireless video system, what options you have, why they range in price so much, and what could be the best option for you. So let's get into it. Wireless video systems have been used for years on set to distribute a video feed from the camera to everyone who needs to see it, no matter where they are on set. This could be a director or a DP sat at Video Village, a focus puller or remote operator, a makeup artist or continuity, the list just goes on. However, for sets with less crew, that doesn't mean that wireless video isn't extremely handy. This could be great when you have a camera in a location where you cannot see the onboard monitor but still want to adjust the composition and check your image. It can also be handy if, say, for example, you're a solo operating a two camera interview. You can be operating one camera while having a live feed from the other on your phone or a second monitor. Otherwise, it's going to be handy for the exact same reasons it would be on a larger set, aka giving a viewable image to anyone on set who may benefit from it, such as a focus puller or a client. A good few of these solutions also allow you to stream directly to platforms such as YouTube or Facebook Live, which with COVID changing the way we do things has become an incredibly popular form of production. It could even be used as a way of providing a feed to anyone across the world who may need access to it. With the market being as massive as it is, we've broken it down into three different segments. These are budget TXRX systems, app-based systems, and zero delay solutions. They all have pros and cons, so let's take a look through each one and why and when to use them. Let's start with the budget TXRX systems. These are made by a range of companies such as Axoon, Hollyland, Crystal Video, and Vaxis. These wireless systems in this range are normally based on H.264 or H.265 encoders, and they simply take in a video feed, encode it, and then send it out over RF for a device to connect to, which then decodes the signal and displays the feed. Most models will be able to be used with a dedicated RX decoder or a compatible smart device, aka a phone or tablet. They are also much more affordable for a camera channel than wireless systems that incorporate zero delay chips, due to the cost of developing and producing these chips. The biggest pitfall to budget TXRX systems is the delay. We perceive anything above a second in our visual system with these systems, the delay tends to be worse on the RX than smart devices and will generally be claimed to be roughly 60 milliseconds, depending on the brand, though in a real world scenario, this can be much higher. Bear in mind that different cameras will also have different latencies over their HDMI or SDI outputs. To put this in context, 80 milliseconds is two frames at 25 frames per second. And frame rate is important when discussing delay, so milliseconds is what you want to look out for here. This can be okay for viewing and even focus pulling, though any additional delays introduced by the camera output and decoder or a congested area can mean that it's not ideal. This congestion and interference can be caused by other kits, such as wireless lighting, remote heads, wireless audio, and other types of wireless video devices, as well as much more. These budget systems also lack features that other high-end solutions offer, such as encryption for secure transmission. Across this area of the market, they are all incredibly similar in terms of feature set. They all have solid apps, are more often than not powered via USB, MPF, or DC barrel, and are limited to how many devices they can output to. What we recommend within this segment really comes down to what inputs and outputs the end user needs. And this could be solely HDMI or SDI or a combo of loop throughs and cross conversion. App based systems can range in price massively from brands such as Axoon and Teradek. They feature similar tech to the budget TXRX units, which can also send video to apps. The Teradek Surf Pro is able to take a video signal and transmit it to up to 10 iOS devices while using the Teradek Link. You can also see feeds from up to four different serves on the same device through the viewer app. The serve can also act as an encoder to be used through Teradek's core cloud service, allowing remote users to access the stream from other parts of the world. The Axoon systems, considering their price, seem pretty compelling too. And though they don't have the pro integration of their Teradek counterpart, they are more affordable. 
take the Cine i2 and 2S, which for around £200 gives you a whole lot. If you want us to take a look at any of the products in this video, let us know down in the comments below. When it comes to the cons, the biggest issue with these units like this is the latency. Now, Teradek claims this to be two frames or around 80 milliseconds, though in a real world scenario, it's usually around 200 milliseconds, which is unusable for focus, though would still be more than adequate for other members of the set, such as script soups, client monitoring, and a bunch of others. If used as an encoder for Core Cloud, each viewer or Core TV link is classed as a decoder and can end up being very costly, but the ecosystem the Surf Pro can plug into is incredibly robust. Lastly, we have zero delay solutions, which are produced by a range of brands such as Ari, Transvideo, but our two biggest sellers have to be Teradek and Vaxis. These zero delay systems are at the higher end of the wireless video market, and they are designed to have, surprisingly given the name, zero delay from camera to output. These units are also designed to be reliable and secure, with most featuring end-to-end -end encryption, so whatever you're transmitting is secure. So what are they used for? Well, for anything on set that requires as little delay as possible. So tasks like focus pulling or remote operation will be best done with this solution. Teradek is the biggest name in the industry when it comes to non-broadcast wireless video transmission. And this is because of their continued development of their technology, integration with different systems and feature set. Their top spec model is the Bolt 4K Max, which in broadcast mode can transmit to unlimited RXs and is stated to have a range of 7,000 feet. They're the only transmitters on the market that can transmit 4K from an SDI feed or via HDMI on the LT models and the only transmission to be HDR ready, which will be important with the industry moving to 4K HDR. Teradek also has great integration with SmoHD, which is a recognizable monitor brand with plenty of great monitoring solutions. Teradek also offers their Ace500, which is their lowest cost zero delay TXRX set. And this system is limited to HDMI, but it does feature both an input and an output. It has a maximum range of 500 feet, can support up to four ACE or Bolt receivers connected to a single TX, and can output video up to 1080p 60fps. This could be a good option for people wanting an affordable zero delay system from Teradek, and it even integrates with the Focus Bolt TX monitor, which is a solid solution for gimbal operators wanting to keep their rigs simple and lightweight. However, one of the caveats with the ACE is its limited feature set over the bolts, such as time code transmission. Since the release of the Bolt 703, people have come to love an all-in-one solution when it comes to wireless monitoring and the monitor itself. And since that initial release, Teradek and SmoHD have released several solutions like it. These solutions are much more elegant than what we used to have to do with adding cages to monitors, having to power everything and cable everything together. Things got messy so quickly. So having these all-in-one units that require one battery is so much nicer to manage. Though the only downside is some of these units, like the old 703 Bolt and Vaxxis systems, have the RX built in. So if the RX or monitor break, they both go down. Whereas the newer systems from SmallHD and Teradek allow you to mount a 4K RX module onto the back of the Cine 7, 702 Touch or Indy 7 monitors. And that provides pass-through power and can be easily removed if either piece of kit goes down. This also means that you'll be able to change the module to another wireless unit which you may need to if the units change compatibility, such as they did with the release of the 4K bolts, which are not compatible with the last generation of bolts. Now, Vaxis are a much newer company in the space than Teradek. However, they have made a great impression with their Storm series, which when compared to their Teradek counterparts are more affordable while also having a more reliable feed. However, they do not have the same feature set, but they're easy to link, feature solid encryption, and the connection is extremely stable. On paper, the Vaxxis loses out when it comes to feature set and specs, but reliability and stability could make it a better choice for those wanting a rock solid connection. If you want us to explore any of these higher end options further, let us know down in the comments below. When picking up a system, there are a few things worth researching about whatever unit you are looking at. First is thinking about how to mount whatever system you choose and how you're going to power it. Lots of these units have quarter inch mounting threads on them so you can use solutions such as Noga arms to get them rigged up. However, I have seen some people even just use double-sided Velcro, but bear in mind, I have had TXs get so hot that they have fallen off using this. When it comes to power, there is no one solution and really it would depend on how you are trying to rig your camera out. On the low end, lots of systems require power via USB, which some batteries and power distribution plates have started to add. 
However, if you only have a DTAP output, you can get DTAP USB cables such as Hawkwood's IPW5, which regulates the power to five volts so you don't blow up your system. So just make sure you, when you pick up a cable, it has a regulator on it. Otherwise, probably the most common port for powering is a two pin Limo, which there are plenty of solutions for. However, like I said, this all really depends on how you're going to rig this all together. We thought we'd also chuck in a few tips that we regularly tell our customers while talking about wireless video systems, starting with antenna placement. Antenna placement is really important to making sure that your TX and RX have as solid of a connection to each other as possible. If your TX and RX have a clear line of sight with no physical obstructions between them, all antennas should be positioned with the antennas perpendicular to the horizontal plane, so they are straight up. If your TX and RX have obstructions between them, such as people or equipment, the TX antenna should be positioned in a V and the RX antenna should be positioned similar to the fingers on a hand in a spread out position like this. It's also not recommended to set up the TX with a single antenna at 90 degree angle or having both TX antennas vertical and all RX antennas horizontal. You may also want to replace your antennas at some point. You'll be able to get spares from the brand of your system most likely, but you may also want to look at the mushroom style antenna as these usually perform better than normal cylindrical antennas that come with most TXRX sets. These mushroom style ones are used on the Teradek Bolt 4K Max, which is Teradek's highest end solution. Most of these manufacturers are really on top of keeping their kit up to date with new features as well as stability improvements. So before heading out onto set, make sure to follow the update procedure of your system and get it up to date. Just make sure you double check everything works before you head out to set. Both Ari and Red have done articles recently talking about how to prevent damage to your SDI outputs via some best practices. And this includes not using unshielded cables as well as how to rig and break down your kit the safest way possible. I've seen plenty of fried monitors and cameras, so it's really worth checking this out. Link to these is down below. But long story short is when rigging up the camera, plug your power cable in first and then your SDI. And then when you're de-rigging, do the opposite. So SDI first, then power cable. Now, just because there are different segments to wireless video doesn't mean they can't all work together. Each segment serves a purpose and they each provide different solutions for different end users. One combination we see quite a lot is a mix of zero delay systems, which could be going to a focus puller and a director's monitor, and then an app-based system that is either receiving another feed from the camera or the loop through from the zero delay TX. But of course, the solution for one set may not be ideal for another. So give us a call if you want to chat through exactly what you need. We hope that this little overview of the current different wireless video systems has been helpful. And it's amazing that wireless video systems are more accessible than ever before. As with everything in our industry, each piece of kit exists for a reason, and what one is best for your needs will come down to you. Let us know what solution you've got your eye on in the comments below, and to stay up to date with our upcoming content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And thank you so much for watching.